there are two things which are mentioned today in the word of god one is we should be holy like god is holy and second is we must be perfect as the heavenly father is perfect my dear sisters and brothers all of us in the beginning of creation were created perfect and even now we are created perfect but there is one way in which we can live our perfection that is through obedience obedience to whom obedience to god that is what jesus has shown us by his life and it is in jesus that we can live holy and perfect life we have everything we are all baptized in jesus and so we are clothed in his presence all we need to do is be able to listen to his voice as it is said understand it with our mind and keep it with our hearts so how do we to do this we must be constantly aware of god's presence just as we need to be aware of our thoughts and our feelings because what happens to us very often we are not aware of them we are led by our thoughts and feelings what we need to do is we need to be present to our thoughts and feelings how are you going to do it you need to have a kind of practice of doing it one of the ways that you can do it is by being at your breath if you are present to your breath you will see a tremendous change that will come upon you because breath is god's presence within us when god created adam he breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living being so god is all the time with each one of us giving us life through the breath and jesus says i am life i am way and truth so we have to follow his way by following his truth and therefore we need to be attuned to him so if you are present to your breath then you will see you will become present to your body to your mind and to your spirit we are not present in that way we are just carried on by our thoughts and feelings but if you do this you will be able to do much better in life be attuned to god's presence and cooperate with god so that in every way what god wants to do through us we will be cooperating with him doing it so that truly his kingdom comes this is how each one of us is called to be in god holy and perfect now i'd like to also talk to you about the theme of this novena and uh, novena of grace it's a special time you have heard what it was said there that Mar marcello mastelli was a young jesuit just 31 years old he was supervising a jesuit church when they were trying to celebrate the feast of our blessed mother and the person who was working on the top the hammer slipped out of his hand and fell on father's head and you know what is the outcome a heavy hammer falling on your head he was completely knocked off he was in coma he was coming in and out of it and so on the 4th of january 1634 they gave him the blessing anointing but soon after that saint francis xavier appeared to him and said you're not going to die you're going to die a martyr in japan and the third thing begin this novena of grace why because this is a season of lent and is a season of grace but in order to avail of it you do something a little more deeper we all are fasting we all do some works of charity we all in prayer that's what the first day told us when we began on ash wednesday we are practicing this but how are we to deepen in that so one of the ways that we can deepen is by being present to your breath 
five minutes before you go to bed, surrendering your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences to Jesus as you breathe out. In Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Till your breath is completely squeezed out of your body. And with that, everything is out. You keep it out in Jesus, he blesses it. The good things are multiplied and given back. The bad things are taken away. The next breath, we experience his goodness filling us. And so, we are restored to the likeness and image of God in Jesus, who becomes the Lord of our lives. What does he do through the night? He unformats us of the past and reformats us in his truth so that we can walk in his ways. When you wake up in the morning, be united to him again for five minutes. You take the rosary and on each bead keep doing this way by breathing out all things in Jesus. You will be completely united to Jesus because you have spent two, three, four, five, six hours of the night in prayer. You have initiated it and you have ended it. Now this chunk of prayer will help you, that means in union with Jesus, to live the other hours of the 24 hours. And you will see, as you walk, as you talk, as you listen, as you interact, you will be all the time keeping not only your thoughts and feelings, but the other people's thoughts and feelings. And the Holy Spirit will make things clear for you. You'll be able to see very clearly. You see things in faith now. And you will be able to respond to the situations better. Now, while we have been talking about Marcello Mastrelli, we are also talking about every other call and how we need to discern God's call. What is God telling me? And to put it into practice to make a commitment. We have also been saying that we will talk about our own personal call. I never wanted to be a priest. It was not in my thinking. But all along I see now that God was preparing me. When I was a small little baby, I was, I was I fell from a height of seven feet and I was totally unconscious. So the whole village had gathered praying that I may have life. I was completely listless, I was just there. And then I screeched it seems and I came back to life after several hours. So already then probably God had done things as we know in Isaiah and Jeremiah, they've been already marked for who we should be right in the beginning. So, but we don't know about it. So we need to keep discerning, is that what God wants of me? Later on, when I was studying in the boarding school in St. Brido's, there was a Jesuit who impressed me. His name was Father Venish. He came from the South, the French Jesuit. And he was so intimate with Jesus when he was talking to the Blessed Sacrament. I was quite impressed by him. And he also told us, write letters to Jesus. And so I began this practice from him to write letters. I don't write them now, but at that time, while I was in the boarding, I would do that. Especially when I wanted something from him. And so I would write it and put it under the uh, altar and then remove it, thinking that it has gone to him. But there was something that happened to me. Whenever I returned back home, I used to feel that there's something missing. I used to sleep for a few days, and then on my own, I would go to church, receive the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus Communion, and then come back. This was something that I noticed in me. And so when I finished schooling in 73, I was thinking of going abroad and I said I will make my life abroad and in that time the Lord called me. And how did he call me? Again my sister who is a closet calm like said you must pray at all times and I would say not mad we can't pray at all times. Then this kind of calling came to me. I felt an urge within me and so I began to say the Our Fathers and Hail Marys because at that time I did not know what is the meaning of prayer. I thought we had to say prayers. And so I began to say prayers, but only one hour you can say continuously. After that you can't. 
So I gave up eventually after many trials and I said it's not possible. But again after some time of giving up, I felt the urge to pray again. And so I began to pray but now not loudly but softly. And after some time I realized I can't pray more than an hour even in this way. So I don't think it's possible. Then again when I had given up I felt the urge and I began to pray internally, internally. So by that time you can see from outside I had gone internal but I could only pray for one and a half hours. After that I can't do. Then again I would start. But this was not good. It was tedious. And it was in this kind of an environment that God himself gave me the gift of praying continuously in my mind. And so I was able to pray the Our Fathers and Hail Marys while I was interacting with people, while I was walking, while I was doing other work. I was really so happy. And it is in this context that I heard his call. I heard like Marcello Mastelli, Jesus telling me, you're meant to be a priest. And I said, I can't be because I don't think I have the ingredients of being a priest. But he was preparing me in his own way. So when the time came for me either to go abroad or to join the society, I told him, you now decide which comes first, that is what is your will for me. And the thing was, I had to go to the novitiate. The time had come because the visa had not come. So I went to the novitiate. My brother was a little annoyed because he had worked at it, he had paid for it and now I was telling him, I'm not coming. And the second day he gave me this prayer all by himself. I just learned, I got a small booklet, I prayed this prayer continuously but he gave me something much more. At every breath I can be united to Jesus. And it's now 47 years, going to be 48 years that I've been praying like this. And it's a wonderful prayer. So it keeps me cool and calm, can do whatever anyone comes, I can be present to them and make Jesus present to them. And that is something which is beautiful. And so you see how I discern God's will and I went into it because he kept on guiding me. He keeps on guiding me and that is how I'm committed to what he wants to do through me, not what I want to do. I never thought that I would be in this place, never. Not in my wildest imagination, but here I am. I've been here for the last 13 years now and God is at work in me. So you see how he calls, we have to discern and we have to commit ourselves to him. He is going to do everything. And I'm sure as you listen to me, you have your own story to tell how God has been working in your life and how you have been discerning, is this what God wants to do through me and be through me? Yes, we are all cells in his body and we have to be a genuine one and which can do that only by being in Jesus. And so let us spend a few moments now in prayer. I'll show you, join your hands like this, keep your back straight, close your eyes. Be present to your body breathing. All the while, all the time, God is present to us at each breath. He fills us from our toes right up to our head and He empties everything in us from head to toe when we breathe out. So when we breathe in, all His goodness is filled in us. But there is a lot of other things in us, thoughts, feelings, experiences, good, bad, ugly. These are also clamoring inside us. There's a clutter of all these things. So when you breathe out, in Jesus' name, get it all out of your system and keep it on Him. That's exactly what He does. Takes away our sins, sets us free from them and purifies us so that His holiness will exude through our being. And that is how He who is in the Father makes us one with the Father who is perfect. And in our own limited way, 
we experience the grandeur of God and His dwelling within us. When we do this five minutes before we sleep, the whole night will be taken up by Him. He will unformat us and reformat us in the truth to be exactly what we should be in Him. And so when we wake up, the first thing, let us remain united. And you'll see you'll put a closure to this prayer the whole night and that will help you through the day. You will see the miracles taking place in your life. This is what He revealed to me. That's what I'm sharing with you.